students who daze or stare out of windows, maybe they get distracted with what's happening outside of the classroom, whether it's something really exciting or whether it's something that isn't terribly exciting. Um, it might be that they watch other students in the classroom and um, may stare at things that are happening or staring at pages in their books, maybe seeming a little bit lost, a little bit wandering around classrooms, wandering around corridors, not really seeming to know where they're going to, and students that need extra prompts. So students that daze, there's many reasons why this could be when we're thinking about sensory processing difficulties. So let's think about some. So the visual sense. So when someone's dazing, they may be staring and dazing to help to reduce that visual stimulation. So maybe if they're hypersensitive to visual information by staring, I'm reducing that extra input that I'm receiving because I'm just trying to focus on the one thing. For other people, it might be that I'm staring to help to block out another sensory system. And this can be incredibly common for students who we see seeming to daze, seeming to wander around spaces, maybe not really sure where they're going to. So there can be extremes. There can be if there's lots of noise happening or if someone's just had a stressful um, activity or situation that's just happened in the classroom or maybe um, they didn't quite answer a question accurately, you may well notice that a student will daze off and will stare off and that could be their way of self-regulating, their way of bringing themselves back down to feeling okay. Some students might also have a really high threshold and a high threshold means that they need lots and lots of sensory input in order to recognise it. So if someone's dazing and staring, it may be because there hasn't been enough stimulation to get them excited, to get them focused on what you're doing. So for students that need a really high threshold, you need to try and recognise what sensory system it is which is going to help to alert them. Try something physical, try something movement-wise. So get up, have a, have a physical walk around the classroom, down the corridor, do some heavy work. So maybe ask them to carry a pile of books to a different room or push a trolley down the corridor to somebody else's room. Anything where I'm using my joints and my muscles, so my proprioceptive sense and my sense of movement is really gonna help to alert me. If it's um, another sensory system that needs lots of input, maybe it's visual. So maybe we can use visual prompts. Maybe it's auditory, maybe it's sound. I know lots of students that it really helps them to focus if they're listening to music at the same time. So some people may think if they're listening to music, how on earth can they listen to instructions? But actually that auditory input is what they need. It's what their body needs in order to recognize and be able to do what it needs to do. For other people, smells can be really alerting, so smells can really help to wake up that sensory system. So think about if someone needs a lot of sensory input in order to alert themselves, what could you do to, to pop into their daily routine to help them be prepared before they get into the classroom? For these students that daze and have a really high threshold, you may also notice that as soon as they get to a computer or as soon as they watch a video, they're alert. Now that's a good example of someone who needs a lot of sensory input in order to be able to focus. When we're watching screens, when we're watching videos, there's a quicker frame rate, so however many um, screens that we notice per second moving in front of our eyes, which gives us lots and lots of visual input, which then gives us enough information from our senses to be able to regulate and to be able to focus. So ways that we can support students who days. Let's prompt them, give them visual reminders of what we're asking them to do, or word answers, depending on what, what setting you're in, what, what does your learner respond to best. If you're in university, then having a timetable reminding them of what activity they're doing next in that, in that 
um, lecture is going to be really supportive. Try and reduce sound. So if you think someone's staring and dazing out of the window because maybe they're overloaded with all of those sounds, then how can we help to reduce those sounds in the classroom? Again, if you're at uni or if you're at college, we know that there's quieter places that students can go and work. So going to the library or going to a different area of the classroom can be really supportive. But also in college and in university, don't forget headphones, don't forget earplugs, don't forget ways that we can help to reduce that extra auditory input for that student as well. And like I said, don't forget to add movement. So if you can, before your sessions, what can you do to help to alert someone? So even just a head, shoulders, knees and toes or a stand up with a star jump, a leapfrog, that's going to be really supportive to help to alert someone, wake someone up before they go into the classroom and start learning.